Um, students, this video is all about the different types of weathering. There are two main types that you guys are going to need to know about. The first one is mechanical. This is where they are physically changed or physically altered. They are physically broken down to smaller pieces of the same type of rock. Um, and then there's also chemical weathering. Now, chemical weathering breaks down the rocks through chemical changes, which means the rocks are going to change composition somehow. Um, there's a lot of different forces for mechanical weathering. The first one could be due to animal action. So animals that burrow in the ground, this could include like gophers, prairie dogs, um, anything that's strong enough to kind of break up the rock underground could be a form of mechanical weathering because they're physically breaking down the rock into smaller pieces. Um, in areas where you have extreme temperature changes, there's going to be some freezing and thawing. When water seeps into the cracks in the rock and it freezes, we know that when water freezes, it actually expands. And so when the water becomes ice, it's going to expand and it's going to crack the rock. And eventually that crack is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, this process is also called frost wedging, where it widens cracks in sidewalks and causes potholes in the streets. So we know that in the winter time, especially when it goes below freezing at nighttime and then it warms up during the day, in our roads there's going to be this freezing and thawing pattern during the day and during the night, and that's going to weather the rock, it's going to break it down. Something else that can happen is plant growth. So as you can see here in this diagram, the plant roots are going to go into the different rocks and it's going to force those rocks apart. So over time, the roots of even small plants or large trees can pry apart those cracked rocks. Okay. Um, there's also a release of pressure. So as, a root, as erosion removes materials from the surface of a mass of rock, pressure on that rock is actually reduced. And this release of pressure causes the outside of the rock to crack and flake, kind of like the, kind of like the peel of an onion. You know that the peel of an onion is going to peel off in like layers and cracks, and that's what can happen to rocks as well. The last type of mechanical weathering is what we call abrasion. Abrasion is like friction. So when sand or other rock particles are carried by wind, water, or ice, it can actually wear away whole surfaces of rock. So here in this picture, you can see that the wind is actually carrying with it little pieces of sand, and that little pieces of sand is going to act like sandpaper against the rock, and it's going to continue to wear it down and shape it away. Okay, now I would like for you guys to go ahead and pause the video, and I would like for you guys to fill out page 425 in your textbook. So pause the video, yes, pause the video, take a couple minutes and fill out that page. Thanks. Okay, now that you guys have filled out page 425 in your textbook, let's talk about the other type of weathering, which is chemical weathering. There's different forms of chemical weathering. If you have a lot of iron in your rock, we know that the iron and the water and the oxygen and the air is going to form rust. So just like your bikes can rust or your cars can rust, rust can happen in the rocks too if you have a lot of iron content. Something else that can happen is that the carbon dioxide and water can create carbonic acid, and this carbonic acid can seep into rocks such as marble and limestone, and because those marble and limestones are carbonates, they're actually going to react to that acid, and it's actually going to kind of melt them away. The other thing that can happen is living organisms. Living organisms can also create weak acid, and those weak acids can also help to wear away and change the rock. Um, acid rain, this normally occurs in areas where there's a lot of coal burning or gas that can pollute the air. And when it pollutes the air, all of those gases are carried up into the clouds, and those clouds mix with the water vapor. And when the particles get large enough to fall out, it's going to carry those chemicals with it, and that's what causes our acid rain. So which type of weathering do you think would happen faster? Well, it depends on two things. It depends on the type of the rock and the climate that you're in. Because more permeable rocks are going to weather away faster. So things like limestone or rocks that are really porous that have the holes where water can seep in, those are going to erode and those are going to weather away faster than rocks that have a harder content. Um, in climates that are very wet and very hot, those, walks, those rocks are going to weather away faster than colder, drier climates. So let's go ahead and watch this brain pop.
Ow. Dear Tim and Moby, what is weathering? From Melissa. Yep, I bet weathering is responsible for those cracks. Weathering is the process that breaks rocks down into fragments and eventually sediments. Soil formation depends on sediments from weathering, and those same bits make up sedimentary rocks. Weathering can even change the Earth's surface over time. Mechanical weathering breaks down rocks without changing their chemical composition. Forces like growing plants, expanding ice, lightning, and mineral crystal growth can all cause mechanical weathering. Plant roots grow into cracks of rock where they can find water and nutrients. When these tree roots get big enough, they'll force the concrete apart. Ice can do the same thing. In cold weather, water freezes and forces rock apart, creating all sorts of pressure. And it gets warm, and that ice melts, leaving cracks and making the rock weaker. Chemical weathering happens when water, air, or other substances react with the minerals in rocks, soil, and building materials to change their chemical composition. When water reacts with carbon dioxide in the air, it makes carbonic acid. Carbonic acid reacts with the calcite in limestone. Over thousands of years, an entire cave like this can form from chemical weathering. Wah! Um, I'm ready to go. What about you? I think you'd better find another place to skateboard. <laughs>